How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here. It is the Earthmaster here. Friday afternoon, about 3.47 p.m. here, California time. Coming up on 4 o'clock uh, Western. That's going to be 7 o'clock out there Eastern time here. And, man, do we have a pretty significant CME event taking place and the subsequent Aurora activity. Look at that. Even though it is still light out here across uh, all of the states, the auroras are quite in intense up there in the northern uh, areas around Canada, Greenland, Iceland. Uh, it looks like this is going to continue well into the evening. Now, here's the sun, the dark and the light line, so to speak, here between light and darkness. Uh, coming up on the eastern seaboard here, approaching it pretty quickly. Should things prevail and sustain at this level, we will see quite the aurora display all across the states here. Uh, some models forecasting what looks to be uh, a visible line down into Southern California, Arizona, Central Texas, down even into Florida. Uh, this is going to be the visible line far as the view. Uh, if you were to look to the northern horizon, you'd be able to see it. Now overhead... Uh, you just look straight up. This is the line right here. Northern California in there as well, uh, down into uh, Oklahoma and Tennessee area. So uh, this is going to be an interesting event. It is holding steady at uh, you know a very strong level. Highest level reached so far looks to be almost a 9, which would put it at a G5 class storm. Now, that's a pretty significant storm and something that we haven't seen since uh, 2005 or so. Um, the official word, let me see here. This is from the Space Weather Prediction Center. If we go over and check out the, let me go back over here to Space Weather Solar Ham site. If we look at some of the models here, uh, indicated on this chart, you can see that some of them have peaked up here in the KP index of nine. So that would be a, a, a very strong storm, G5 storm. Goodness. Um. Uh, the majority of these awfully close here to the nine level. It doesn't look like things are going down yet. Uh, there's obviously going to be some fluctuation in the readings, but uh, it looks like this could prevail through the night and amplify conditions out here across the, uh, a good portion of the states here and into Canada, obviously. Uh, Alaska as well, pending you have clear skies up there. Uh, the real-time solar wind stream, this is the data here. See what we got. Okay, so we got the speed right here, KMs per second, fairly consistent ever since that uh, aurora, or ever since the CME impacted the planet earlier today. Density, I haven't really seen a huge spike here in density. I'm really surprised. I'm wondering if it's not coming here uh, overnight, but the speed has ramped up. Uh, temperature as well down here in the green. And the BTBZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field, as long as we get a good southward pointing tilt here, um, then we'll be okay for the auroras. It will allow these auroras to pour in, kind of like we like, kind of like what we've seen here over the last few hours. Uh, there was a little bit of northward tilt that would suppress the auroras, uh, but it looks like that has since opened back up here with the uh, these red runs, these little red dots indicating uh you know venturing off towards more of a southward tilt so uh that's something to watch pretty closely again this is uh quite the event and there is some pictures coming in here from let's see where this picture is coming in from oh wow look at that beautiful and this is just one area out here uh they've seen them all throughout uh, a good portion of europe over there and uh, these are probably going to come in left and right here uh, to the uh, solar ham site. If you have any uh, pictures you'd like to share here, I'll gladly post them up here on the video. But uh, we're starting to get some images here of some awesome red, green out there on the distant aurora display here uh, around that uh, area where it's dark, obviously. Uh, but that line is increasing here in terms of uh, the soon-to-be visibility. Uh, looks like maybe it's up. Oh, man, very close to the main area. Either way, these guys are going to be in for quite a show uh, with these conditions persisting like that. Goodness. 
Uh, definitely one for the books, one of newsworthy value. Uh, now, as far as solar flaring goes, definitely still sizzling here with M flare activity. Our last X flare, of course, last night, the long duration event, I'm sure that shot off another CME or directed. Uh, so we have a series of elevated events here that we have to deal with that have started today, should last and persist through the evening and then tomorrow and into maybe even tomorrow night and the following night. But we're currently sizzling here in the M flare category. And that uh, sunspot there, the culprit of all this activity, 3664, is, uh, let's see here, is this working? I've been noticing a little bit of slowing, slowing down of the internet recently. And I don't know if it's my internet or if it's just the servers that these guys operate on. Who knows? Could have something to do with, you know, more than likely it's something to do with all the activity stirring up right now. Because um, things are running slow. Uh, there's that very complex sunspot, quite the dynamic setup here. Uh, this was taken, that's yeah, current. So uh, notice the the complexity here, a lot of dark colors indicating the uh, differences in polarity of this magnetic uh, structure. Structure, uh, But we're, we're out here on the southwestern quadrant of the sun. Still could be geo-effective here, should anything else blast off. But here in a day or so, it's going to be a little bit further out here where we probably won't be in the firing line in terms of uh, any eruptive activity once it's way out here on the western limb. So that'll leave us with a whole bunch of little weak sunspots, very weak sunspots compared to what we've uh, been dealing with. But uh, we still got that to, uh, to watch here for now. And, of course, the ongoing activity getting bombarded here not only with uh, the uh, high-speed solar wind stream and the CME, but also the proton event kicking up here prior to the arrival of the CME. You know, so all in all, this could could potentially intensify throughout the evening. It did have a little bit of an earlier arrival component to it, but uh, I still think tonight's going to be an awesome night uh, for the Aurora activity out here. I'm going to be out and about here in Northern California seeing what I can see. And, um, yeah, and here's the extreme KP index of nine. Goodness, that is crazy. So we'll continue to watch this and report back on anything that uh, changes out here. But everything looks consistent, somewhat early, but on schedule far as a, uh, you know, a high impact event. And uh, the Aurora should uh, start to appear out there. Once it starts getting uh, dark here along the West Coast, we got a little ways to go before it gets dark. East Coast, though, is approaching pretty quickly, coming up on 7 o'clock out there. Early evening time period. So, uh, goodness, yeah, sub aurora, major storm. All right. Um, have we got anything yet for earthquake activity? Nothing big coming in yet. Newest earthquakes just show a couple smaller quakes in the very typical regions here. 3.8 out in Texas. But uh, overall, things are, you know, normal in terms of plate dynamics out here. We'll watch, though, in the hours. And uh, yeah, I'd say 48 hours, 72 hours, maybe at the max for some larger earthquake activity out here with all this ongoing uh, pressurization here on the magnetic field and the subsequent effects that could take place out here across the planet in terms of the plate movement and earthquake activity being triggered. We'll check back in here a little bit later on this evening, folks, uh, for another update. Take care, and uh, if you're out there around the East Coast area, get ready because it's, it's coming in here soon. going to be getting dark out your way.